first scene is the father's waiting room in a hospital. The time is nine years ago. Amos is waiting for his daughter, Arbadella, to be born. And here is Andy Brown, Arbadella's godfather-to-be. And this is the call Andy has been waiting for. Hello. Uh, hello. Uh, Andy, uh, I got Ruby over to the hospital. Uh, ain't nothing happened yet, but I don't think it's going to be too long now. Yeah, I was just sitting around waiting. Call me up in case. What? Ruby's in the hospital. I'll be right over. Don't worry about nothing. Take it easy. Relax. We got to keep level heads in a time like this. Look, Amos, I'm pacing on this side of the room. Will you please stay on your side? <laughs> I tell you, Amos, I'll never go through this again. Look, Andy, why don't you try to calm down a little? This is the most natural thing in the world. There ain't nothing can happen. Well, it's easy for you to talk, Amos. You is only the father of the child. I is the godfather. <laughs> Look, Andy, I guarantee you everything's going to be all right. Yeah. Well, I already bought a present for the baby. Oh, nice of you, Andy. Yeah, a box of crayons. <laughs> uh, you kind of early with this present, ain't you, son? Well, I don't expect him to use them right away. It'll probably be a week or ten days before you'll be able to draw anything good. You still think it's going to be a boy, huh, Andy? Look, Amos, there ain't no two ways about it. It could be a girl, just as easy, you know. Oh, use your head, Amos. Your brother has three children, all boys. Your sister has two children, both boys. There ain't never been nothing but boys in your whole family. So there ain't no use in talking about it. It's got to be a boy. Why, it's Mendelssohn's Law of Heredity. <laughs> Mr. Jones? You're the father of a seven-pound baby girl. <laughs> well, Nine years have passed. It is the day before Christmas, and every year on this day, Uncle Andy takes Arbadella out to do some window shopping. Boy, look at all the toys the Globe Department store's got this year, Arbadella. Gee, I've never seen so many toys, Uncle Andy. Yeah. Look at that sled. Gee, I sure hope it snows tomorrow. Wouldn't it be wonderful to have a white Christmas? Yeah, them's the best kind, honey. <laughs> Say, that paint set must be something. Yeah, yeah, that is right there. Junior paint set, five ninety-five. Easel's extra. What's an easel, Uncle Andy? Uh, easel? Oh, <laughs> that's one of them things. Uh, uh, all artists have them. Couldn't do without them. Uh, hey, look at that. Well, what do they do with an easel, Uncle Andy? Oh. Well, uh, they put some on their heads. Uh, you see, they got a little tassel on them, and that keeps the head warm while they paint. Gosh, you know everything, don't you? Well, most everything. A couple of things might have slipped by me. <laughs> Kitty furniture, look over here. Mm -hmm. What's a perambulator, Uncle Andy? Oh, uh... Uh, that's the same as a easel, only it ain't got no tassel on it. Uh, I think we better go, because I got some packages to wrap at home. Uncle Andy, 
Uncle Andy, there's just one more window. Oh, yeah. Uh, come on, let's go look at it. Tell chopping down the cherry tree. <laughs> yeah, well, come on, I guess we. Mm, that doll show sure is something, ain't it? That's a talking doll, Uncle Andy. It's my favorite. That's the one I told Daddy I wanted. But he said Santa Claus couldn't afford it this year. Yeah. Sure is pretty. Isn't she beautiful? Come on, Abadon. Uh, we are out of paper, Miss Dandy. Yeah, well, wrap some of the other stuff. Uh, you still got some Christmas paper there. Oh, yeah, sir. Hey, uh, what you got there, Miss Dandy? Oh, uh, these are some handkerchiefs I gonna give to a gal friend of mine, Evelyn Bennett. Wee, ain't they pretty? Yeah. <laughs> Evelyn Bennett? Uh, these got the letter C broadrid on the corner there. Yeah, well, last year I was gonna give them to that gal Carmen I was going with, but we done busted up. <laughs> uh, the letter C there, I don't see how you could give these to no Evelyn Bennett. Yeah, I thunk of that. So for the last three days, I've been calling her Cookie. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Lightning. Noel, Noel. Merry Christmas. And a Noel to you, Kingfish. Well, Andy, I see you getting all your Christmas packages wrapped here. Now, if you want me to turn my back so I can't see, why, just say the word. <laughs> yeah, well, I ain't bought you a Christmas present, Kingfish. Oh, just ain't got around to it yet, eh, son? Well, don't worry, you got lots of time. Now, my wife and I were talking this morning just about that same thing. She said, George, do you think any of your friends going to give you that bathrobe that's in the corner window over at the West Side Men's Shop? I said, honey, you mean the blue one with the red sash? She said, yeah, mark 695. I said, that's the one, all right, size 40. Funny how me and my wife talk back and forth, ain't it? <laughs> yeah, you can use a new bathrobe, Kingfish, because that new head on when I come up to see you yesterday's show was a mess. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you shook hands with me through the pocket. Well, Andy, getting back to the Christmas gifts, uh, excuse me a minute, Andy. Uh, what are you doing that for, Kingfish? Well, I'm uh, coming up here in the morning, Andy, with a pretty big package for you. Well, if I can't get it in there, why, we can always take the door off the hinges, can't we? Yeah, but this is kind of embarrassing to me, Kingfish, because I is broke and I can't even buy nothing for you. Nothing at all? That's right. Well, what time are you going to be up with that big package? Well, on second thought, Andy, I won't be up as early as I expected. <laughs> well, don't wait in for me, Andy, because I got a lot of packages to deliver, and I may not get around to you until February or March. Yeah, well, Merry Christmas to you anyway, Kingfish. Oh, uh, but by the way, Andy, I got your Christmas card here. Well, that's nice of you, Kingfish. Yeah, I'll read it to you. Say, uh, Yuletide greetings and best wishes for the new year from your dear friend, signed the Kingfish. Well, that's nice, all right. So, uh, ain't you gonna give it to me? Oh, no, Andy. You see, things been kind of tight this year, and I ain't uh, sending out no card. I just bought one, and I'm going around reading it. Well, happy <laughs> I bet next year he'll just go into a store and memorize a card and won't even buy one. <laughs> uh, I still got those packages to wrap for uh, these crayons here. Oh, this is for Abadella. You know, Lightning, I feel it's kind of bad about this present. Nine years ago, when Abadella was born, I gave her a box of crayons. And after all this time, I can't do no better. 
Uh, that ain't nothing to feel bad about, Mr. Andy. Maybe she don't even like crayons anymore, Lightning. She might. And she might not. After all, you don't know what she likes. That's the funny thing, Lightning. I do know what she likes. Well, uh, even that don't make no difference. You ain't got no money to buy nothing more. Yeah, I was broke, all right. I wonder... What time is it, Lightning? Uh, nearly one o'clock. Lightning, maybe I got an idea. I'm going over to the Globe Department store. You wanted to see me? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, is you the gentleman that does the hiring for the department store? That's right. My name's Simmons. Won't you have a seat? Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, my name is Brown. And I was wondering if you need any extra sales help for the rush this afternoon. I'd work hard. We did need extra help up until this morning. But I think we can go through the rest of the day with the sales people that we have. Oh. Well, thank you just the same, Mr. Simmons. Oh, well, Mr. Brown. Uh, yes, sir. Maybe you can do it. Uh, what's that? One of our Santa Claus helpers had to go home unexpectedly. We could use somebody to take his place. You think you could do it? Uh, be Santa Claus helper? That's right. Well, I ain't never done it before. Sure, I can do it. That's fine. Now, we go down on the fourth floor, and I'll get you your Santa Claus suit and your whiskers, and I'll tell you exactly what you have to do. But well, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Well, how's that? Perfect. The toy department's right here on this floor. We'll go in now and get you all set up. Uh, before we goes out there now, just what must I do? It's very simple. You just have the children come to you one at a time, and they'll tell you what they want for Christmas. Well, I think I can handle that all right. Yes. And just one thing, Mr. Brown. Just in case you should run into any difficulty of any kind, why, just call the floor walker. Oh, uh, if I has any trouble, I call the floor walker. Yes. Well, let's go. Yes, sir. And good luck. Okay. All right, all right. Okay, sonny, you first. Come right up here and sit on my knee. Atta boy. Now, what do you want for Christmas? A jet propelled plane and a tank. Hmm, a jet propelled plane and a tank. Well, that's nice, all right. What's your name? Oliver Smith. Yeah, well, Oliver, has you been a good boy all year? Yes. Yeah, I could see that without even asking you. <laughs> You're a nice boy, all right. Yeah, and I bet you drink all of your milk at every meal, don't you? No, I don't. You don't? No. Oh, but I bet you drink part of it, don't you? Don't drink none of it. None of it? No, I ain't never gonna drink none, either. Oh, uh, Flo Walker! Oh, if Santa Claus bring me the jet plane and the tank, I'll drink my milk. Oh, never mind, Flo Walker. I know you was a good boy, Al. <laughs> Here's something for you. Thank you, Santa. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, next. Oh, my, what a nice little girl. Now, you sit right up here. <laughs> Now, what is your name? Henrietta Lewis. Oh, that's a pretty name. <laughs> uh, well, what do you want for Christmas, Henrietta? I want a football, some boxing gloves, and a drum. Uh, well, tell me, what does a little girl like you want with them things? Oh, I don't want them for myself, Santa. I want them for my little brother. Your brother? Yes. You see, Santa, he's sick in bed and couldn't come down here. And I just wanted to make sure he gets some presents. Well, that's sweet of you, Henrietta. 
And I can tell you right now that Santa Claus is going to take care of everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, Merry Christmas to you, Henrietta. And Santa Claus is going to be real good to both you and your little brother. Uh, here's a present for you. Thank you, Santa. All right. <laughs> Ready, Bob? Yes, sir. <laughs> well, I guess you want to stand there and ask for your stuff. You don't look like the lap setting type to me. Right. I'm standing right here, Mac. Mm, what's your name? Percy Carter. Hmm, Percy, huh? Well, what do you want for Christmas? A machine gun. Do I get it? Well, uh, 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 yeah, uh, I'll see what I can do about it and all that stuff. All right, who's next? Wait a minute. I ain't through yet, Santa Claus. I want to ask you something. Uh, what's that? Last year I asked you for a pair of skates. Did I get them? No. What goes? Well, you got a lot of other things, didn't you? Oh, sure, sure. I got a necktie and some socks and a couple of handkerchiefs. But who wants that stuff? Oh, well, uh, better luck next time. Who's next? Wait a minute. I got more stuff to ask you. That workshop up north where Santa makes all his toys. Yeah. What kind of country is that? A uh, country? Oh, well, it ain't nothing but uh, uh, ice and snow and uh, uh, snow and ice and uh, all that stuff. No trees and nothing? Um, no, uh, just ice and snow. Well, then where does Santa get all those apples and bananas and oranges that he puts in the stockings every Christmas? Well, he, uh, uh... Oh, Flo Walker! <laughs> Flo Walker! Don't bother, Santa. It ain't that important. See you around, bub. <laughs> Next. Santa'll take care of that. <laughs> Here's a little present for you. Oh, thank you, Santa. Well, I guess that just about does it, Mr. Brown. The store's closing now. Oh, uh, there sure was a lot of kids. You're looking pretty tired, Mr. Brown. Yeah, I guess I'll go down and see Mr. Simmons. You know, I don't think that knee could have held another kid. <laughs> well, there's always room for one more. Come on, Sonny. Sit right up here. Now, what do you want for Christmas? A baseball glove, a punching bag, a basketball, a watercolor set, a ring toss, a fountain pen, a Mickey Mouse wristwatch, a cowboy suit, a telegram set, a bicycle belt, a flashlight, and a baby sister. <laughs> yeah, how can I get one? Oh, Blue Walker! We certainly appreciate having you here this afternoon. Well, I appreciate being here, Mr. Simmons. Uh, uh, of course, uh, like I told you, uh, when I made the deal with you, I'm doing this for a very special reason. Yes, and I have it for you, Mr. Brown. I had the stock boy take it out of the window. The talking doll. They really look cute, don't they, honey? They certainly do, Amos. And the children are so excited. I'll get it, Ruby. Is the kids in their room? Yeah, they all in bed, Andy. Come on in. Yeah. Merry Christmas, Ruby. Merry Christmas, Andy. Oh, gosh. It sure is a beautiful tree there. Amos can take credit for it. He's the chief decorator, you know. Uh, look, Andy. Uh, I seen Lou Johnson on the street today, and he told me he was at the Globe Department store with his kid, and you were Santa Claus's helper. That's right, Amos. You know how crazy I is about kids. Oh, uh, 
<laughs> Let me put these down. Hey, you got loads there, all right? Yeah, y'all can put them under the tree like you want them. Uh, this one, this is for you, Ruby. Oh, thank you, Andy. And this is the uh, Toy Auto by Amos Jr. Oh, he'll love that. And this is a music box for little oh, Amos Andrew. Oh, she'll get a kick out of this. Uh, this is yours, Amos. Oh, thank you, Andy. And this one is for Abba Devil. And be sure and tell her that this is from Santa Claus. Wow, that's a big package, all right. Oh, just a little something I picked up. My, you certainly planned Santa Claus this year, Andy. Yeah, well, I got a couple of other places to go. I'll see you later, Amos. Don't forget you're coming for Christmas dinner. Uh, thanks, Ruby. Merry Christmas, boy. Uh, oh, wait a minute, Andy. I got a prison here for you somewhere. Oh. Oh, no, that's Kingfish. Here you are, Amos. Merry Christmas, Andy. Oh, thanks, Amos. Thanks. Well, Merry Christmas, folks. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas Andy. Andy. Yeah, well, good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, Andy. This sure is a huge package, Amos. I wonder what's in it. Well, from the shape of it, and with Andy working down at the Globe Department store today, I think I know what it is. What do you mean, dear? Well, let me put it this way, honey. Those kids that met Santa Claus this afternoon at the Globe Department store came as close to meeting the real Santa Claus as they'll ever come. Uh, I'll put that under the tree. Uh, look, Ruby, you fill the socks, and I'll look in on the kids to see if they're all asleep yet. I just checked Amos Jr. and Amos Sandra, and they're fast asleep. Oh, well, I'll check off the Okay. Well, aren't you sleep yet, darling? No, Daddy. I'm so excited about Christmas, I can't fall asleep. Gosh, I'm just hoping it snows tomorrow. Well, maybe it will, honey. You never can tell. Daddy, hmm? would it be all right if I turned on the radio for a little while? Well, for just a little while. I'll snap it on for you, honey. Thank you, Daddy. There he is. He'll warm up in a few seconds. Here, let me straighten out. And now the Christmas choir continues. Bit with the Lord's Prayer. Now, you lay down. Daddy, mm. would you get some Christmas music on the radio? Why, darling, this is the very best Christmas music you could get. They're gonna sing the Lord's Prayer. Uh, it's right here in your Bible. It's the sixth chapter of St. Matthew's. I've been singing the Lord's Prayer with Mommy. Yeah, I know you is. But what does the Lord's Prayer mean, Daddy? Lord's Prayer. Well, I'll explain it to you, darling. It means an awful lot. And with the world like it is today, it seems to have a bigger meaning than ever before. But what does the Lord's Prayer really mean, Daddy? Well, uh, you just be quiet and I'll explain it to you. The first line of the Lord's Prayer is this. Our Father, which art in heaven. That means Father of all that is good, where no wrong can dwell. Then it says, hallowed be thy name. That means we should love and respect all that is good. I see. And then it says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That means, my darling, as we clean our hearts of all hate and selfishness and fill our hearts with love, the good, the true, and the beautiful, then earth, where we are now, will be just like heaven. That would be wonderful, Daddy. And then it says, give us this day our daily bread. That means to feed our hearts and minds with kindness, with love, and with courage, which will make us strong for our daily task. Oh. And then after that, the next line of the Lord's Prayer is, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Uh, you remember the golden rule? Yes, Daddy. Well, that means we must keep the golden rule and always do unto others as we would want them to do unto us. I see. And then it says, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Now, that means, my darling, to ask God to help us do and see 
and think right so that we will neither be led or tempted by anything that is bad. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now that means, darling, that all the world and everything that's in it belongs to God's kingdom. Everything. Your mommy, your daddy, your little brother, your sister, your grandma, you, and everybody. And as we know that, and act as if we know it, that, my darling daughter, is the real spirit of Christmas. That's good, Daddy. Well, I guess I better let you go to sleep. Good night, Daddy. Good night, my darling.